Hello everyone. So, in today's video, I am doing a little work to this ILG Model 423 motor that I got a couple of years back. Um, when I bought this motor, I knew the tag said that it was a dual voltage motor. It could run at 220 or 440 volts three phase. Um, and you could see by the nameplate that there would have been six leads coming out of the back of here. Now, I didn't really take that much of a notice because when I saw the pictures of this, it was an online purchase. So I didn't get to see it in person until it was delivered. But um, I didn't notice they had the leads all curled up and tied together. There was only three leads coming out of the back of this. So when it arrived and I saw that, I knew, I said, okay, most likely this thing was rewound. And sure enough, I looked on the side and there is a, there's actually a, a tag. It says Topeka Electric Motor Repair. And um, it has their number and everything. So this motor was definitely rewound. I knew at that point when I saw that. And they have a sticker on the side, and it says um, it says that it is 460 volts, and that's it. So it doesn't mention any other voltages. So by that point, I said, okay, it's been rewound for only the high voltage setting. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about three-phase motors back at that time. But now, with the knowledge I have on these, I know that... For a three-lead configuration on a three-phase motor like this, there's only really two two ways that it could be internally set up. Uh, you could either have these wired as a delta or a Y configuration on the inside of the motor. Now, since this is wired for the higher of the two voltages, more than likely, I figured, it's probably set up in a Y configuration. So you've got the three leads that come in and they each go into one of these coils. So it's literally, you know, you could say phase A, phase B, phase C, whatever you want to call this. Uh, these three coils are the start of the three phases coming in. And they go around the motor, all the way around the stator. And it was actually pretty easy to find this. I just cut open some of the lacing and started to pull stuff apart very carefully, and I found, I actually kind of could see it before I did anything to the motor. This had a, a weird look to it, but I noticed this kind of bulky connection here, and when I pulled it apart, there's actually three leads that go into this connection. So, there it is. This is the Y connection on this motor. So, all I need to do now is cut this apart, take the, the three separate windings or the, the other end of the three windings and attach a lead to each one and then run it out with the rest of these leads and I will have a six lead motor again and I should be able to run this on the low voltage setting or high voltage. I'll have that option now, but it will be back to its factory configuration, the way that this motor would have left from ILG. And, um, I'm really happy that I finally figured this out. It really, now that I know about it, it's not anything very complicated. Um, but back then, I didn't really know as much about motors in general, even rewinding motors. And now, after having rewound a few, I noticed, I said, oh, these connections are all right here. I know how they do this stuff. They're all right on top. So... I should be able to get into the connections and find where they're tied together and put those new leads on. So I'm going to do just that and we'll get back and see how this thing runs afterwards when I get all the six leads coming out of here. And I'm going to test it on the low voltage and see hopefully on my phase converter, hopefully this thing will just instantaneously start since it has no load on it. It's just the motor by itself. Uh, when I had it wired like this for the 460 volt uh, the way they had this configured from the motor shop that rewound it it kind of started slower because it was only getting half the voltage from my phase converter but um, now since I'll be able to 
wire it to the same voltage as the phase converter, uh, it should get a substantially faster startup. So we'll see how this thing works. All right, so here's the, I separated the three leads. This is one, uh, this is two, and where's the third one? Uh, right here. So this one, this one, and this one. These were all tied together as the Y point in the motor. Now they'll be separated, and then we'll solder a new lead to each of these. And combined with the other three, we will have six leads coming out of here. All right, so here's what the job looks like after I have added the three new leads. They are the same gauge wire. The insulation is just a little bit thinner on the ones I added compared to the old ones. But um, you can see I sprayed it with some of the, the red spray varnish, which is actually what the motor already had, so it kind of blends in with it. Um, and right in here is where the new joints are that I added. Can't even really tell. It all just blends right in. So uh, we will see. Once I uh, test this out, I'm going to test it with the ohm meter, make sure everything checks out. And I'll also do an insulation resistance test to make sure everything will be good to go. And then we'll fire this thing up and test it. Alright, so here we go with the ILG 423 motor. This is wired in delta configuration for a low voltage. And I have it running off of my rotary phase converter. I'm going to start the converter. And here we go with the start of the load. And off. Well, let's stop this real quick and we'll go for one more start. Here we go. I have the converter fairly well balanced, it's not perfect. Um, Right now I'm getting around 247 volts is what's coming out of the wall. And I'm getting about 247, 248 on one of the legs and about 243 on the other. So it's not perfectly balanced, but uh, close enough for this test at least. It's better than it was the first time I tried it. I didn't do any capacitor adjusting on the converter for it. and. Uh, it was pretty off. It was off by a good 35 volts or so. Uh, so I think that was a bit too much. Now it's running nicely. Um, the whole converter and this motor running right now is drawing 2.2 amps at 247 volts. That's the single phase draw coming out of the wall. And I'm getting... Around 2.6, 2.7 amps between each of the phases. That's what the motor's actually drawing. I do have this thing pretty well uh, power factor corrected. So when the converter is just idling, it's practically drawing no current through the line. It almost has a perfect power factor and the motor is just idling. So it draws very, very little. But yeah, so it's running pretty nicely. It still doesn't start up as quick as I would expect. I'm not sure why that is, if it's a problem, or if it's just how this specific motor is. I don't know. But um, I'm just glad to have the six leads again. And now I have full access to both ends of all of the windings. So I can do separate testing if I need to, or anything like that. So, I uh, hope somebody finds this useful, informative, helpful, whatever, um, or just something entertaining to watch, and have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Alright, one last thing I wanted to add is the, uh, I wanted to take a measurement of the no-load RPM. So pretty close to synchronous speed. I think 514 is actually the synchronous speed for this, for a 14 pole motor. So that is pretty good. 
So a little over 500 RPM. <laughs> 